evening, good evening, good evening, Facebook. <clears throat> All right. So, like I said, I was coming on about 6.30 since I posted that post about uh, debts that can be removed without paying them. Referring to uh, collection accounts. Good evening, Mr. Miller. Thanks for tuning in. So I've been speaking to a lot of people through past few weeks, past few months. And good evening, Ms. Leach. Uh, my other half is also tuning in. I've done a lot of these before in reference to collection accounts. What's up, Fruit? Thanks for tuning in. But how can I say it's not like I know that it's not a standing band that's watching my page. So sometimes people miss some of my Facebook Live. So that's why on occasion you'll see me repeating the same information because I have over 4,300 people on my page. So everybody's not always watching. So I try to do these lives as much as possible so I can educate people as much as possible. Uh, good evening, Talisha. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. But like I said, this is a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, throw them out there. But I want to explain, because it's tax time right now. And everybody got in their tax returns, and they're going to be quick to want to go rush and pay off some of these old debts. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, don't do it. This is the reason being, okay? First off, you got this bill with Comcast, Verizon, Sprint, whatever the case may be. Let's say you owe them a thousand dollars. What's up, sis? Uh, let's say that you owe them a thousand dollars. Once they write it off, it's a tax write-off to them. But then the collection agencies, the collection companies, they're gonna buy your debt for a penny on the dollar. So if you owe Comcast a thousand dollars. They're going to buy it for 100 and they're coming after you for that $1,000. But the fact that a lot of people, majority of people, do not know the credit laws, do not know the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, which I'm actually going to read uh, some violations that a lot of collectors do based from our attorneys through our company. So I got this at our convention last year. Okay, I'm going to educate you about that. A lot of people, unfortunately, we're not knowledgeable about things. So when people come at us with words that sound like a threat, we get scared. And we're quick to do it. If you don't pay this, we're going to do this and do that. And they can't. <laughs> you know, number one, you didn't sign a contract with them. So you don't owe them. So that's why I tell people never get on the phone with collection companies because you know what's the first thing they say? This line is being recorded because once you admit it on on the recording, you locked yourself back in and then you locked yourself back into that five year of uh, statute of limitations where someone can try and sue you. But depending on the amount, majority of times they don't do it. So that's one thing. Now, before I go into anything more and you can think of your questions, because I believe Mr. Miller said he had some questions. Uh, I just want to tell you some of these uh violations that collectors do so that you know these are these threat tactics that uh collectors use one repeatedly calling your telephone cursing swearing or otherwise profaning at you contacting and disclosing your debt to other people contacting you without disclosing their identity or purpose for the call threatening to take action against you that they don't intend to take such as criminal actions having you arrested or prosecuted garnishing your wages or taking your property when there's no judgment against you threatening to call your employer and to disclose the debt all of these are violations common violations threaten to turn your case over to an attorney when it is highly unlikely that any attorney would sue for a small balance contacting you after they know you are being represented by an attorney calling you at an unusual time before 8 a.m. in the morning or after 9 p.m. at night or an unusual place, calling you at work if they know that your employer prohibits it or if it is inconvenient for you, contacting you after they receive 
a cease and desist letter prohibiting any further contact, contacting you and making false, deceptive, or misleading statements in connection with the collection of the debt, such as falsely representing to, to you that criminal action will be taken against you in connection with the debt, leading you to believe that debt collectors is an attorney and they're not, or that a phone call or letter is from an attorney and it's not. Those are against the law. Falsely impl implying affiliation with the United States or any state, including the use of any badge or uniform, sending a collection letter or leaving a voicemail that fails to contain the statement, this is communication from a debt collector. All of these are common violations of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, but a lot of people are unaware of that. How many people can actually raise their hand and say that they knew most of that stuff that I just read was against the law and was prohibited? But like I said, people, collectors know some of them scare tactics and they come at us because because we don't know. Plain and simple. We don't know. Now, for those of you that have spoken to uh collectors on the phone and you try to make arrangements this is what's going to happen okay yeah you can pay it off and it'll have a zero balance but it's still going to be a negative mark on your credit report and it's going to hurt your score and a lot of times people think well i'm gonna pay off this debt it's going to help my score no it's not i'm here to let you know you have a yes you'll have a zero balance but it ain't gonna hurt you it ain't gonna help your score and even if you do have that zero balance you're still going to have a negative mark on your credit report, which is hurting your credit report. Now, what we do is get those items removed without paying you having to pay a dime. I started a year ago. I had seven collection accounts. Five of them came off on round one, and I didn't pay a dime. Now, a few weeks ago, I had another one come off. I only have one now. I had seven. Five came off first go round. Because when you're on our protection plan, you're going to get new dispute letters every 60 days while you're on the plan. And I'll go into that a little later as well. Okay. Most of our clients start seeing results, start seeing results 45 to 90 days. However, we do recommend that you stay on for at least four to six months to get the best results. It is a process. You know, I joke with people all the time and say, we walk around with bad credit for 10 plus years, but we ain't got the patience to wait four to six months to work, uh, fix our credit. That's crazy. That's a crazy mindset. Everybody's credit profile is different, so we can't give you a date. But our attorneys are like pit bulls that go after the credit bureaus and the most aggressive in the industry. The difference between us and other credit repair companies is United Credit Education Service that signed behind me, they're a nonprofit 501c corporation. So they're able to dispute all your negative items all at the same time, whether you have one or a thousand. We're able to dispute all of them all at the same time with all three major credit bureaus. All other companies like uh, Lexington Law, CreditRepair.com, a lot of they can only dispute two to three items a month. And some of them can only dispute a certain one bureau at a time a month. And that's why it's dragged out for two or three years. My sister-in-law, she was with Lexington Law for two years. They could not get this foreclosure off her credit report. She's been with me 40 days. The foreclosure's been off, and she just got approved for a $400,000 mortgage. If you have been talking to collection uh, agencies or companies on the phone, you trying to make arrangements, this, that, and other, then I'm going to give you a tip for those that already been talking to them. Because see, when you talk, you're locked in. Make sure you tell them you want a pay-to-delete letter. They ain't going to offer it. Tell them you want a pay-to-delete letter, meaning you're paying off that debt and it's going to be deleted off your credit report. Got to get that in writing. And nine times out of ten, like I said, they ain't going to offer it to you. They just want the money. Okay? I'm trying to educate you to teach you how we can get it removed without you paying a dime. Save yourself some money, but no, some knuckleheads want to go ahead and I'm like, okay, go ahead. And then they're calling me in a few months and everything. Uh, it's still showing my, uh, yeah, I told you that. She didn't want to listen. 
Some people got to learn the hard way. That's all. Plain and simple. But uh, I did say this was a Q&A session, so feel free. That's what I'm here for. I don't do these too often. Uh, let's see. Yes, sir, Fruit. And I, I appreciate you always tuning in. I see my sister Carolyn in the house. Fugo, how you doing? DJ, how you doing? Joseph, Latasha, Obi. Let's see what Latasha says. How does answering your phone lock you back in? How it locks you in because they're going to get you to verify the debt is yours. That's how they lock you in. Because, yeah, you had a bill with Comcast or whatever, but you ain't signed this uh, contract with XYZ company. But once you verify it to them that this valid, that this debt is valid, it locks you in. If that answers your question. Let's see. Uh, our medical bills that are in collections counted against you. Any bill that's in collections is counted against you. Anything. Doesn't matter. We can get them removed. I know of one of my business partner's cousin that had $100,000 worth of medical bills deleted off a credit report. See, the reason or how, let me see, how we're able to do that is we leverage the Fair Credit Reporting Act that was enacted in 1971. It gives... Uh, consumers the right to dispute and investigate any and all negative items that's on their credit report. If it's erroneous, obsolete, or uh, erroneous, it has to come off. 80% of the information that's reported to credit bureaus is inaccurate. 80%. Okay? Credit bureaus are in the business of reporting your information. They're not in the business of validating it. And see, it's an expense. When they have to, when we send these dispute letters in, it's an expense that they don't want to pay. And credit bureaus are just billion dollar companies that's in the in, in the business of selling your information. They're not no governmental authority. A lot of some people think that because it says agency uh, or bureau that it's a governmental authority. They are not. And actually, which one is it? It's think Experian, Experian or TransUnion, did you know their corporate headquarters is in Ireland? They're not even in the United States. A lot of people didn't know that. Okay, let me see what other questions I have in here. I'm experiencing this with a Sprint bill and a payday loan that I did not do. How can I get out of it? The payday loan is harassing the hell out of me. Well, another thing being on our protection plan is you have access to our credit attorneys, okay? If you have any collectors that's calling and harassing you, you just contact our attorneys, they will stop the calls. I can bear witness to that because my wife had co-signed on our son's student loan years ago. He got behind in his payments. They start blowing up her phone four times a day. I say, yo, babe, let the attorneys know because we met the attorneys at our convention in Vegas last year, and that's how we was able to get this information, got their card, this, that, and the other. She called them, phone call stopped. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so my suggestion, get started. <laughs> so once you get started, we're going to send, uh, uh, it's a simple process. Our attorneys are going to pull your credit report. They're going to do an analysis on it. They're going to put some dispute letters together. They're going to mail them off to you to keep you in the loop of what's going on. All you have to do is sign them. Attach a copy of your social security card as proof of identity. Attach a copy of your driver's license as proof of residence because the credit bureaus will not take the dispute letters without this documentation and mail them off to the credit bureaus. That starts the process. But we don't just do that. We're going to monitor your credit. We're going to protect your identity. You have access to our credit attorneys. We draft up your will, trust, medical, and financial power of attorney. We educate you. A lot of stuff that I've learned, I've learned through this company. Because unfortunately, no one never really taught us anything about financial literacy in high school, elementary school. My mother's a teacher for 30 years, been retired, and she's 74 years old. She calls me now for credit questions. I'm 50 years old. I've just learned more in the past year. So the credit builder uh, tab, that's you receive an online portal so you can monitor your progress 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The credit builder educates you so much about everything about credit student loans, et cetera, et cetera. I had a $17,000 student loan deleted three, four months ago. I know other people that have had 
close to a hundred thousand dollars worth of student loans deleted if it's a federal student loan you still have to make arrangements to pay it back but we can get them deleted off your credit report because the government knows that student loans are preventing people from becoming homeowners now so you can get it deleted off your credit report uh what else oh we have a budgeting uh tool to help people that needs to be on a budget we have a debt elimination tool you know which is crucial because a lot of people are in debt you need to find a way to eliminate that debt so this tool allows you to input your income input your bills and it's going to give you a get out of debt report uh let me see other questions hope that answers your uh question maisha you can give me a call anybody 609-792-2210 i do 10 minute free consultations or if you just ready to get started let's rock and roll uh yes sir if you go hey knowledge is power you ain't never but see i'm a, i'm a, i'm a, uh counter that i used to say that too but as i've gotten older and got wiser applied knowledge is power because see a lot of people got knowledge but they ain't doing nothing with it see it's one thing to get something but if, if you ain't utilizing it you're powerless so that's my thing but thank you uh mr miller says collection agency has started garnishing wages from a previous student loan what can a person do if a garnishment already has been in effect there's nothing we can pretty much do because it's already in effect no that answers your question we can do something before it but if it's already in the mix uh ain't too much that we can do uh what's up ronice deborah vincent ryan what's up yo just hit me up i got you just hit me up that's my uh my love train family miss bennett how you doing Let's see deidre exactly patience is a virtue see the thing with that is a lot we live in a microwave society where everybody wants things now everything i think personally if people could drive through and get their head cut and just mm, they'll do it because <laughs> we everybody wants things now man it's it's ridiculous you know sometimes think about it when you put something in a microwave and it's only two minutes people still stop it two seconds before we can't wait two minutes we li we live in a so much of a fast-paced society that people don't have patience but you can walk around now to me this is my thing ask yourself you can't you won't wait for six months to fix your credit what are you doing about it now sitting on it ain't gonna happen and those for you that think that oh it's gonna drop off for seven ten years that ain't necessarily so and there's no law that says that it has to stay on there for seven to ten years if people get them false hopes or the myths that they hear no it says it can stay up to seven to ten years but there's no law that says it have to stay on for seven to ten years and there's people clients that i've had stuff that's been on their credit report 15 20 years and those are some of the things that come off first go around that's my wife reminding me i told her i ain't gonna be too long but she texted me let me know my i told her what time she texted me uh so i hope that answered your question uh where was that Ryan, how do I get a car that I turned in or my credit? Talking about a repo, Ryan? That what you talking about? I had a repo. It's it's off my credit report. One of them. They're working on the other two. Is does that what you're talking about, Ryan? We can get repos off too. It doesn't matter whatever any negative items can come off. Student loans, repos, evictions. I've had late payments off my card uh, removed, bankruptcies, judgments, tax liens, medical bills, collections, uh, short sales, charge-offs, whatever's negative. But the thing is, people got to get started. That's all. The, the company's been around for 15 years. They have an A-plus credit rating with the Better Business Bureau. A-plus. You can't buy that. And one thing that I love about the company is that the company is debt-free. 
How can we help other people get out of debt if we're in debt? The debt, the company is debt free. Don't owe anybody. We have the same key executive since the inception of the company. So that tells you this is not a fly by night company. Uh, Mike Toloff with Paramel Nike and our fair, uh, corporate offices in Farmington Hills, Michigan. Let's see. Hey, Kathy, my man Brutus. How you doing, sir? See you in Vegas. All right, Maisha, just, oh, what would I do? Just, uh, I zoomed out, zoomed my page in. Just call me after I get off this Facebook Live and we can get you started. Miss Murray, how you doing? One of my superstar uh, business partners down in North Carolina. DJ, if my credit score goes up on Credit Karma to the X. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Y'all need to stop looking at Credit Karma. <laughs> straight up i'm gonna tell you why okay credit karma isn't 100 percent accurate that's number one that's a marketing site they use a vantage score when 90 percent of creditors or lenders look at your fica score that's why a lot of times people look at credit karma oh my credit karma say my credit score is a 750 and then you go try and get a car and it's a 620. Vantage score, FICA score. So stop looking at that, wasting your time on Credit Karma. It'll give you a roundabout, but it ain't 100% accurate. And nine times out of 10 is lower than what you see on Credit Karma. Hope that helps. Lori, you're going to have to text me or text me or call me. I can't discuss the prices on social media. Uh, it's against compliance issues, and we can get shut down, so I don't do that. You have to call me. Uh, I will tell you this. It's affordable, <laughs> less than $3 a day, and it's less than what bad credit costing you right now. Because, see, people don't realize this is this is what I really don't think that some people realize. When you got bad credit, and I had it, and mine ain't excellent yet, but I see I got the knowledge and I'm working on it. A year ago, my credit score was a 528. Now I'm in the 600s. Okay? If that helps you out, my score has went up about 100 points, 120 points so far. My wife's score went up 140 points so far. My senior business partner's theirs went up about 300 something points. The first go around, my senior business partner's score went up 77 points. His wife went up 118 points. They started April 2017, and now this score is up over 300 something points. You know, I had a young lady that contacted me on Facebook around Thanksgiving of 2017 i stay in contact with my clients i reached out to her in january she had five items deleted her score shot up 75 points and her and her husband closed on the house in february got to start the process some people you got to let the process work i'm like otherwise what you doing on it just by sitting on it ain't going to help when you fix your credit me and my wife was paying almost 585 dollars for car insurance for two cars once we uh, got our credit scores to go up, we're paying less than $500. People don't realize, I didn't know this neither, so I'm letting you know, your car insurance is based off of your credit score, not your driving record. That's a small part. They run your credit when you want to start an uh, insurance uh, contract. They run in your credit. And your credit score is low, you're high risk, and that's why your insurance premium is high. That's number one. So when you fix your credit, your insurance premium go down put more money in your pocket high interest rates when you got bad credit anybody a lot of people just want to get credit cards and we don't think about the aprs when you got bad credit you're going to be paying anywhere from 18 to 29 percent apr i was paying 23 percent interest on a car in a 2007. you're paying a luxury car payment but you ain't driving a luxury car Mind you, I was doing that for three years, paying 23% interest. Allowed the company to work on my credit. And for my 50th birthday, I was able to get myself an Infinity Q50, zero money down, 8% interest. Boom. Fix your credit. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, are my payments to your company tax deductible? You know, that's a good question that you said that. Where's I? I was actually watching a video before 
I came on here. I don't know if too many of y'all heard of this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This guy right here, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki. I was actually watching a video about him. He is breaking down some things. Uh, and basically, when you're an employee, you get taxed. But when you have employees, you get tax breaks. That's, that's, that was deep. Uh, you know, he said you need a job for experience, but you ain't never going to become wealthy on a job. So, and he was talking about the American dream. They teach us to go get a job and to go to school and basically you get a job or go to school. And, and student loan debt is the worst type of debt they said to ever have. And it keeps people in bondage to go on a job to pay off that student loan that they went to school for for years. It's, it's, it's crazy madness. They said they call it the American dream, but it's actually the American nightmare. And so many people are fearful for losing their job or, and the perfect example is that government shutdown. Think about it. People were freaking out for the past month because of that government shutdown because they ain't have no backup plan. How many people got 90 days worth of expenses saved up? Telling you, but just start you part-time business from home. I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, and I'm telling you, I can actually teach you how to get your credit fixed for free and make some money. How many people don't know five people with bad credit or that they could help? First five people I signed up was my wife, my daughter, my son, my sister-in-law, and one of my partners, one of my business partners that's on his this line right now. Get my credit fixed for free. Uh, so no, <laughs> DJ, if that answers your quest question, I got you, Ryan. Uh, Talisha. All right, Talisha, I'll be in Vegas next week, so I'll send you the link to get started. I'm leaving for uh, Vegas on Wednesday. We have convention Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I will be in Vegas. You can text me, uh, you know, we, we do have breaks and everything, but I'll send you the link. You returned it. They still call it a voluntary repo, right? If you didn't, you, even though you returned it, they still look at it as you had a bill and you didn't pay it. So they consider it a repo, whether it's voluntary or not. Closed credit card. Is it in collections, Lori? Okay, that's another thing, Well, The reason my mother asked me that, uh, when you have a credit card for 10 or 20 years and you pay it off, do not close it. That's why my mother called me. Do not close it. That's gonna hurt your credit score. Reason being, you've already established that you're responsible for 10 or 20 years. You have managed, uh, it's like credit is like wine. The longer that you have it, the better it is in time. So if you have a credit account for over 10 years, don't close it. You're going to drop your credit score. I hope that answers your question. Let's see. My man Martin, what's up, sir? Got to get you back active as well. So if there's no more questions, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Please like this video. Uh, if you're seeing this on the replay, type replay in the comments for me. Share this video. This may be able to uh, help somebody else out. You know, like I said, I'm available 609-792-2210. Normally, I'm available 9 a.m. to 12 midnight, Monday through Saturday. I work my business full time. Majority of my business partners work this part-time you know and if you're looking for uh, a side project that won't interfere with what you got going on right now hit me up we don't do the paperwork let me tell you as a credit referral agent I don't do the paperwork we have attorneys that do the paperwork just so you know 
I'm educated about the things and all I'm doing is referring the services to you. It's just like if someone moved into your town, right? And they'd be like, hey, Ryan, or hey, Christy, or hey, Martin, hey, what's a good place to go for a restaurant? Or where's a good place I can go get my hair cut or get my hair done or get a pedicure or this, that, and the other, right? And you're referring them to somewhere else for a service, right? Only thing is you ain't getting paid for it. That's all I do. I refer the services to people that need it because this is the way I look at it. Uh, bad credit is like cancer. It's killing our communities. There's actually 68 million people with a 601 credit score and below. I try to help at least one a day. And we are changing lives, I'm telling you. We, I get, I've met, had so many people message me about I inspire them. I encourage them, you know, to get past and do things that they never thought and everything to get approved, to get a house, to get approved, to get that business loan, to get that new car, to get an apartment. There's so many things that good credit or credit in itself, it gives you an option, basically, to use other people's money. That's the way I look at credit, OPP, other people's, or OPM, other people's money. Uh, but it, it just, it's like, how can I say, if you have a 750 plus credit score, you know, you can walk in, sign and drive out the lot. You know how sometimes you got bad credit, they're trying to run your credit with 20 different places, and then all them inquiries are hurting you, and you stand there for two, four, five, six hours, and you still don't get the car because of your bad credit. So I'm trying to tell you, it's 2019. Get your credit fixed, especially if you're trying to buy a house by the end of this year. You need to get it done now. Let's see. Yeah, Martin, we, we got to talk because you should have already been, so you could have been getting yours done for free. Uh, you make your last car payment on your car tomorrow? Okay, congrats. How much interest you've been paying and how long? What can I expect as far as my credit is concerned? Well, that's a lot of factors in that. How long you've been making the payments? Have you ever been late? See, I'm a real quick because I want to cut this short, but there's five factors that go into your credit score, okay? A lot of times people say, well, I pay my bills on time. My credit score is not going up. Your credit your payment history only counts for 35% of your credit score. That's it, 35%. But see, people don't realize one late payment can drop your credit score 50 to 100 points easy. Okay. Then you got another 30 percent that's based off of your credit to debt ratio. Like Christmas just passed, and a lot of people don't maxed out their credit cards and wonder why their credit score went down because you maxed out them credit cards. You went over 30 percent. I'm sure. I'm positive. You go over 30 percent of your credit uh, limit, your credit score is going down. Then you have another 15% that's based off of your length of credit. Then you have 10% that's based off of your uh, new credit, like inquiries. One or two inquiries are okay, but when you have five, six, seven, eight inquiries, it makes it look like you're desperate for credit. It's going to drop your credit score. Then you have another 10% that's based off types of credit. You want revolving credit. Those of y'all that are talking about you don't want no credit card, you need to have at least three to five because that's revolving credit. If you have bad credit, do not apply for unsecured credit card because you're going to ding yourself twice. You're going to get denied and you have an inquiry on your credit report. Get you a secured credit card. Let's charge something that you pay on a monthly basis, like your cell phone bill, your gas in your car, and pay that bill off every month. That's going to establish your credit. And in a few months, it'll help boost your score. Uh, the other in that 10% is revolving credit and uh, installment credit, which are like car payments, personal loans, mortgages, things of that nature. Uh, let's see. Hope that, hope that answers your question. So, and then it's based off of your statement date, Deidre. Uh, your statement date, see your due date and your statement date, like on credit cards, are two different things. Due date is the date is due. Statement date is the date that your creditors report your balance to the credit bureaus always want to make sure by the statement date that your balance is under 30 percent so i appreciate everybody for tuning in like i said uh anybody want to call me after this you can go ahead i don't think i have 
I have another business call thing to 8 30. Uh, so that's it. I appreciate everybody. Mr. Martin, look forward to you getting on board. Uh, Talisha, I believe you too. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, like this video, comment on the video, share this video, and comment replay if you're just seeing it for the first time on the replay. All right. Once again, I'm David Leach, a.k.a. The Credit Ambassador. I'm out here because I'm passionate about what I do. I'm helping people change their lives. All you got to do is ask yourself, what are you going to do? What else you got to lose except for your less than perfect credit? Pretty much. That's it. Sitting on it ain't going to make it happen. Got to take action. All right. Peace.